Howdy doody, folks. It's all right, I've got my tea. I'm ready to go. How have you all been since, was it Friday? Yeah, it was a Friday last stream. Oh, lots happened here since then. Not to do with the stream, to do with a whole bunch of other stuff, which is a real, real, real pain in the ass. And some not so good things. My rate looks okay, frame rate. I see the, uh, there's a small amount of drop frames. Hmm. We're in the green mostly. Let me know if the sound is an issue. Hopefully I'm hitting the right kind of levels. Uh, I guess I should probably show what we're going to talk about. Um, let me see, what can I do here? Uh, I need to turn on, turn on. Why aren't I on? Oh dear, what have I done? Have I messed with this workbench CAD? Here we go. Let's just switch over to this. So you can see what we are going to be discussing here. That's the plan this evening. I hate the way this re this this numbering works here. Why is that one and these one and two bonkers? I wonder if I can change that. That's weird. See there it says two, but yeah, it says one. I don't understand. That's odd. Right, I'll just leave that for a sec. Let me just go and check a couple of things. Got a few household chores to do. Mm. Yes. Right, I guess I should get on. Let me just have a sip of my tea. So I hope everyone's had a better time than I have over the last four days or whatever it's been. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, four days. I cannot wait to throw 2020 in the dustbin. Now, let's do the community news. So, um, forum-wise, um, there was an interesting thread um, on a kind of HDL that compiles called Wire, spelt W-Y-R-E, and the link for that. Hold on. Let's just move that over. It's this one here. Let me just paste that. This is quite interesting. It uses a C like syntax. Um, if I can bring up the example. Me turn my sharing of this on browser. Uh, 
Oh, hold on. Okay. Damn. Hold on. That's really, really excessively big. So there it shows you the example of this, which is quite interesting. So it very much uses a kind of um, kind of C-like uh, syntax. Right? It's using brackets and things rather than begins and ends, etc. But it is quite an interesting uh, looking, you know, language that can be compiled to HTML. It actually outputs Verilog, as far as I'm aware. Um, compared to Verilog, Wire aims to cut down on verbosity, so it looks a bit less verbose, reduce errors via strong typing in brackets, and improve design iteration speed. Wire compiles to Verilog, so any design can be fed through the existing Verilog face toolchain, which is a common approach actually. Um, the exception to that is probably NMIGEN. Now, NMIGEN doesn't do that. It uses the low-level IL object, uh, which is used by Yosis, I believe, as its base model. Although it can output as Verilog as well. In fact, it just uses uh, Yosis, as far as I, I know, to actually kind of do that stuff. So yeah, this is quite interesting. It says here the wire compiler is written in the Muon programming language, which is one I've never even heard of. I don't know if anyone else on here has heard of Muon. Uh, let me know what my levels are like, by the way. No one's told me yet, so I hope you can actually hear what I'm saying. Uh, Muon programming language, uh, of which I am the author, which is my main open source project. There's a link to that as well. I suppose I better include that for completeness. And uh, syntactically, Wire and Muon have quite a bit in common. So if you like Wire, be sure to check out Muon too. Um, for a quick summary of features, check out the feature overview. So if I just show you that quickly, um, has module instantiations. Uh, it's using, I've used, seen this before, that used to be referred to as becomes equal to, what language was that from, is it Pascal? It's always we always used to pronounce that becomes equal to so in other words that's kind of a mutable equal thanks laurie for letting me know the volume's good you're in blue today and i'm in green on the chat um maybe you know this uh colon equals uh where did that come from was that like a pascal thing originally I'm sure it used to be pronounced as becomes equal to, I for mutable uh, variables. Anyway, I see they use that. Uh, minimalistic syntax. Uh, types have compact notation. Dollar $n, where n is the number of bits. Um, names go before types. Um, Y uses C style block syntax and uses new lines as statement separators. Yeah, it notices there's no uh, semicolons and stuff in there as well. New example. Oh, Spinal HDL uses that as well. And does it is that a um, assignment to a mutable variable in uh, Spinal HDL as well, Laurie? Or is that uh, um, is that a um, operator or assignment in um, Scala or is it specific to spinal HDL? Um, match expressions which are quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you've looked at languages before but uh, match is quite often it's used in either pattern recognition or it's quite often used in circumstances where you you you'd normally see something like a switch or a case. Um, and here he's using it, I think, like um, like a case. I think so. What is, what's he saying here? So the match expressions are essentially a switch statement 
in expression form. Yeah. Uh, large literal data blocks, built in functions for transforming data. Slice, chunk, and swizzle. Swizzle? I've not heard of that one before. To slice and transform data, it can be useful for splitting data across multiple memory banks, for example. Okay, uh, column accurate compile error reporting. Well, that's quite good. You need to know where your errors are, and that can be done badly in a lot of these examples. So, Laurie Griffiths is saying equivalent of nmigen e dot equals. Yeah, but what I meant, Laurie, is the colon equals used in Scala, or is that just used in a, as a spinal HDL operator? Spinal HDL Scala also has similar matches. But they're, they're type matches, presumably, aren't they, Laurie? Because it's a very type-oriented language. Or type slash value matching, I guess. Anyhow, we're digressing, but it is interesting to see language use. Just spinal has, H, has the um, colon equals, right? Okay, so it's not Scala thing then. Uh, so what else did he say? Finally here, check out the language guide, learn more about it. You have inputs, wires for initialization, black box module, ZX operated for zero extension. Uh, rep built-in function for repeat value. Uh, triple hyphen symbol to specify disconnected inputs. Uh, okay. Constants or supported operators are unary, binary, ternary. Statements, pause, edge, niche, edge, if, else, etc. More details on features discussed on this page. Hmm. What does the language card look like? Which is now Uh, no. Features, example. Wow, this is a lot. That's going to be too small. Pascal does have, yeah, becomes equal to. I always pronounce it, becomes equal to. Pascal was one of the languages I had to learn when I was at uni. It was annoying because we all wanted to do C, but we had to do Pascal. And it was an engineering course. It wasn't a computer science course. It was systems engineering. Um, but yeah, we had to do a lot. Well, most of our program was actually in assembly, but the high level language that we had to learn was Pascal as part of the course. Anyhow, so yeah, take a look. Um, it's an interesting uh, language. Uh, I'm not sure how how much experience Nick has from the HDL world. He might come from more of a software world. Uh, but nevertheless, it's an interesting tapestry of different things that are emerging at the moment. You know, to give options, provide options and different ideas in uh, hardware design language so i'm all for it so it's very interesting so that was covered uh, under that thread oh i didn't give you the link for the thread did i let me click back actually hold on let's get rid of this uh, there was a um there was another one another language hold on let me just go back to uh, let's just bring the editor forward let's turn this browser off Back to our, our list. So yeah, the other one that um, was mentioned, um, Laurie brought up was I'm not sure how you pronounce this, but it's is it Silis or Silis or or what? I don't know. Um, but let's um, oh the thread. I was going to link to the thread. I better give you the link to the thread. From the forum, it's very important. Uh, oh God, it's awkward doing this. Um, I better put a timestamp on this. Where are we? Uh, do 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 do. Seventeen forty-nine. Seventeen forty-nine. 
fifty no seventeen forty five. There we go. Yeah, so the silis silis uh let me just bring that up. This one's been around a while. I'd heard of this before. So let's just bring that up. And back. Oh, come on, turn on. Let's put that here. Uh, who did this? Uh, a language for hard coding algorithms in FPGA hardware. Um, wait, is this what I think it was? Hold on. Not Mojo. Do you want to go out? Thanks. Sorry, let me cut out. The um, well, is this something to do with the? It's not Mojo. Mojo was the language for these like alchemy boards or whatever they were called. Is that what this was? I have heard of it before. The Silas, right, language for hard coding algorithms in F, into FPGA hardware. Important Silas is in alpha stages and under active development. Read more. Important lowest charges occur in working progress branch. Uh, I'll read more about development branches. Silas makes it possible to write algorithms for FPGAs in the same way we write them for processors, defining sequences of operations, subroutines that can be called, and using control flow statements such as while and break. At the same time, Silas lets you fully exploit parallelism and the niceties of FPGA architectures. Describing operations and algorithms that run in parallel and always active as well as pipelines. So is it more like a HLS rather than a HDL? I'm guessing. Hold on, what's Laurie saying? Doesn't look like wire has compile time meta features like MMIG and the spinal HDL, which is what gives those languages their higher power. Possibly, yeah. I'm just trying to work out whether Silas is more of a HLS rather than a HDL. What do you think, Nori? Um, to set up Silas, used to getting started. One minute, so I missed a bit. At the same time, Silas lets you fully exploit the parallelism of FPGR architects, describing operations and algorithms that run in parallel and are always active, as well as pipelines. Silas remains, remains close to the hardware, nothing gets obvious obfuscated away and when writing an algorithm you can control what happens at which clock cycle with predictable rules for flow control clock domains are exposed that silas compiles and interoperates with verilog you can directly instantiate bind with the existing modules that's quite good to set up silas so getting started da -da -da -da. Sample projects documentation is here uh, first example is a code. So that looks like a function algorithm. Main. Mm. Is that like my old joke used to be for my presentations where I said, um, you know, when you write in Verilog, all the always is are like multiple mains. <laughs> is that what they're doing? Or is it just a main or the main in this case? Anyhow, yeah, main output with like LED. Date counter LED becomes equal to it. There we go again. Colon equals counter 20 colon 8 while 1 or 2 counter equals counter plus 1. So, uh, yeah, it's saying here LED is updated every clock with the eight most significant bits forever. Uh, eight most significant bits, and then the next one is a uh, while loop forever. How do I know that's done with a clock or is just everything done with a clock? What's the difference between? Is it because we're using colon equals that says it's updated by clock? Anyhow, compile size first example Mojo LED dot V Mojo project Mojo dot top. Line one is the entry point of any Silas hardware. 
the main algorithm. So it is main. <clears throat> Line two, we define 20 bit and so on. Initialized or not. Uh -huh. Most different bits for Canada. Oh, no, here we go. The assignment to the LED uses the colon equals operator, which is an always assignment. So, yeah, basically, it's a synchronous assignment. Uh, is now automatically updated. Look out of reaching on rising on each edge of each clock. Such assignments have to appear at the top of the algorithm right before any other instructions. Hmm. Interesting. Main one. Yeah, this is a bit weird though. What's going on here with this stuff? This is like, uh, are these like clock cycles or something? Hold on. This code is doing a sign table in the block ROM and accesses it to obtain a cosine sign for the current view angle. Note the use of plus plus colon step operator in line seven and ten. This explicitly splits the execution flow and introduces one cycle delay. Interesting. It looks really odd. It looks like you're in a bit of a diff <laughs> or something. Um, introduces one cycle. Delay. I mean, do they have to be right hard up against the? Uh, character one of the line here waiting to be born out to output a result in the field our data select address anything between is considered combinational wow that's a bit complicated yeah i'm not sure yeah that might take some doing to get some pattern recognition with that so what's Laurie saying? Doesn't look like one Yeah, not sure about Silas. Probably not hate this. No, I don't think it is. Looking at this, it kind of sounds like it in the description. But then when you look at what they're doing, it's definitely not, I don't think. Um, hmm, interesting. Prioritize combination over, over sequential execution. Parallelism comes first. Clearly defined rules regarding clock cycle consumption. Basic clock domain reset signals. Interoperates easily with Verilog. Familiar C-like syntax. Powerful Lua-based preprocessor. Interesting. Uh, the Wolf FPGA is a raycast, essentially based on sequential flow. Where each step is relatively large combinational block. You can run Doom on the ULX 3S with Silas. Is it Silas or Silice? I don't know. Damn, that's the damn thing. Interesting. So again, another interesting one to have a look at. We are certainly not short of choices these days. Um, I just wish I had enough time to try all these out, frankly. This one looks a bit, bit more uh, comprehensive and built out, to be fair. Who is it made by? Is it a person or a company or what? What is this? Silfeb. Who Silfeb? Arctic Code Vault contributor. Hmm. Okay, so more for you guys to look out. Uh, what else is on our list of items that we're going to look at? Uh, let me just kill off the browser temporarily. Back to our items. What do we have? So, oh, Juan Gonzalez has been busy. He's been doing a lot of uh, APIO quick starts on different boards. Uh, uh, if you don't know him, I've got his Twitter handle here, actually. He's a good guy to follow. He's a Spanish FPGA guy and a guy. He's uh, kind of, I think he's the main guy for FPGA Wars, if you've ever heard of it. Um, this is Twitter URL. Um,
and he's been using APIO, which is a basically a command line Python like package manager thing for that that can install all your FPGA tools, etc. Uh, so it's really handy. I've used that before. We've used it certainly with um, Black Ice and recommended it as a route, particularly early on in Windows when it was difficult. We'll find out more information about that. APIO. Um, so the symbol that you see see for APIO is actually I think it's uh, Spanish for celery celery stick but there's big connections with this and iStudio as well in fact iStudio leans on that for its internal board support and stuff um, so he's been doing a lot of uh, like quick starts he's been tweeting them uh, Quick start of API with different boards. You probably see some tweets on this link. Um, but he's a great guy. He does a lot of work. He does all sorts of workshops and stuff across Spain. Uh, gets involved in all sorts of different FPGA projects. I think he's also connected to the Alhambra board, uh, which is an open source um, FPGA board. They came out just after we did our first board way back in 2017 I think they did this can't remember the exact date um, so do check him out and if you're not following him do um, he tends to do quite a lot of work you know quite low level work bringing people into the community you know people that haven't done FPGA at all uh, I may get some dropouts in a minute I'm seeing a couple of red lines by the way just to warn you um, then so that i think covers it any questions on any of these if you don't know what api o is it's definitely worth taking a look um it's a really useful python package uh, and set of libraries and if you ever want to do fpga work or automate any part of it you know it's worth um, bringing in the api o stuff Hookie dookie. Any questions on any of those news items? Anyone else got any community or news items that they would like to share? Please let me know before we move on to the, um, the two items I've got for this evening. Hope everyone's good, by the way. Probably some new people that have joined. I'm not paying attention. Ah, Laurie's saying something here. My current project is implementing the 1984 Apple Macintosh on the ULX3S. That's cool. Have you got a link, Laurie? Do post a link. Um, one of my first, not one of my first, one of my early computers was an Apple II that I got second hand. I don't know what happened to that damn thing. Whether it's in an attic somewhere or what. That's kind of cool. That was quite late. That was after I was at uh, uni. But no, it was during the last bit of my uni, I think. I can't remember how I ended up getting buying that from someone secondhand. I might have got them a word processor or something. So I was working on those at the time, part time, earning some money and in the summer and stuff. It doesn't do much yet. Well, it takes time. Got to start somewhere, don't we? Hmm? Mac one two eight. Oh, it's a Macintosh that you're doing. Wow, sixty eight thousand. Cool. Sorry, I was thinking Apple twos. Ah, oh, brilliant. I remember that. I used to work on those machines. I worked in the uh, Apple environment for many years in the early days. It was very cool. Mac 128. It had that kind of, they had, at that point, they had the kind of D type connectors for the mouse and stuff. They hadn't really done ADB at that point. I think a lot of it was still serial, or it might have been ADB, or an early version of ADB for controlling the mouse and keyboard. Laurie's saying that the Apple II does run on the ULX3 as well. 
So how much memory can you do on the, um, what are you using the SD RAM? Or is, or is there, there's probably enough on the, um, on the ECB5, what is it? Is it uh, 85F? Did the Sinclair QL is my first 68,000? Yeah, Sinclair QL. I never actually used the Sinclair QL. Mind you, a lot of people didn't, they didn't actually make that many. Well, I don't think they actually sold that many. A lot of them didn't work. The drive certainly didn't work from what I think. Um, that works quite well, he says. Uh, currently, I am really doing Mac Plus with four megabytes of SD RAM. Okay, but can you do the um, the one twenty eight without going to the SD RAM? <coughs> Uses VRAM, yeah. Cool. Hey, that's cool. I might have to have a look at that and play around with that. Take a few drives down memory lane. But I mean, they were well ahead at the time. Um, and for things like the word processing and that, it was brilliant. So much better than the PCs at the time. Um, did they have Microsoft Word then, or were they using some weird thing? I can't remember now. Hmm, can't remember. Could do 128k RAM, BRAM in uh, the 85F, yeah. I also started as X80 and 81 on the ULX3, the first computer. You're doing them all, Laurie. Can't believe it. Yeah. But you're certainly making good use of your time. Crikey. Yeah, I never had a Z80, Laurie. I only had the Z81. Z80 was before my time before my time <laughs> it was only about a year before z81 to be fair well the original z80s didn't work very well either laurie to be honest <laughs> they were a nightmare but they did do something you could program the damn things and that was what was important the keyboard was a nightmare horrible but I must keep doing it what are you doing hold on a sec folks emergency my wife can't cook Sorry, folks. A bit of emergency in our house. It's all right. Place isn't on fire yet. Rich chance. Um, but that didn't work well. The ZX Spectrum works well. I always remember. I ended up. I got a ZX81, and my brother, younger brother, later, got a Spectrum, and I was really envious because it had soft keys. Mind you, you always just used to play games on the thing. No one really programmed the ZX Spectrum, Spectrum much. Um, they mostly just played games on them, unlike the ZX81, to be fair. So, moving on then, from Laurie's epic retro computing hacks. Um, main thing for the day... Uh, let me just close that down. Go out of the way. Close that. That up. Oh, 
Right. Hmm. Weird. Only one sec, folks. I'm just rearranging my windows here. It's all a bit of a mess. Right, so the next item... Oh, God. Next item on our list is... Um, Black ice. Let me just run up the cab because we're going to need that. So this is uh, what I've been working on uh, CAD wise as well as programming stuff. Crikey, there's a lot of windows open here. Let's do hmm, this first. Uh, let's turn the browser off. Let's turn the. <coughs> what do we need? We need to have a look. We need piece of layout, and we need schematic. Let's just switch over. So what we see here right now is the potential black ice five board so let me go over a few things here because i want to get some feedback uh in fact let me get rid of the root the routing on here because that's not making things easy to see that'll do let's just do a round tour of this because i want to get um some feedback on this so dimensionally i think it's about 75 by 75 if i remember or 72 by 75 hmm odd numbers let me just double check that yeah 72 by 75 right whatever um let's just do a guided tour on this so Again, we've got the ICE 40 here. So this is basically alloy, but on a larger board, okay? With a few other bits and bobs. So uh, we've got the ESP32 here, the antenna, crystal, uh, tricolor LED. We've got a 32 uh, kilohertz crystal there for the RTC. So. We didn't have that on the um, the icicle small board because um, we have a problem. You know, big problem with the icicle is fitting everything in. So you've got very little room. So um, you've got again, you've got the uh, PS RAM, which is 64 megabit, eight megabytes. So that's the same as Alloy. And you've got a flash as well, size to be determined. Um, but that'll probably be at least 16, I would guess. Let's also, uh, we've got our two boot and reset buttons, just like we had on Alloy. You need those for the Python stuff. So again, I'm looking at using Circuit Python running on ESP32 to manage stuff and also to be able to write programs as well that interact with the ice 40 so there's a um, umbilical link between the two which is quad spi not octo spi but just quad spi because i need enough pins for that to work properly i've got an sd card um i've got an audio connector here which is all you out um, i've got a larger linear regulator here um, again these items are being chosen for relatively low cost um, and then I've got a USB-C 
Yay, USB-C connector on here, uh, which is a 16-pin version. Be my first port with a USB-C on. Um, so that's this side, and then on the right-hand side, on here, we have potentially the camera. Excuse me. Starts. Yeah. She is, and I'm in the middle of a stream. Yeah, well, she's doing it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she knows, right? All right. Bye. <laughs> it's just one of those streams, guys. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, my word. It's all happening today. Why would I want to buy this when I have a Black Eyes 2, which has more LUTs, more RAM? And has Arduino headers. I don't know, Laurie. Um, but I take your point. Um, one of the reasons I'm building this is I need to build something fairly swift to test out the main purpose of this. But let me come back to that. Whether I produce this board in volume is an entirely different question. I may only produce a certain number of these. <laughs> because um, as you know I'm working on the uh, amalgam which is an ECP 5 board which is probably going to be more useful but anyhow putting that aside finishing my tour uh, so we've got a uh, camera link here which is based it's the same as the alloy um, or ice cup board um, which is a um, parallel parallel port camera and at the bottom we've got a parallel port LCD remember we talked about this with Alloy before sorry as well so we can output to an LCD using it's like a parallel 8080 type connector um, in addition to that here we've got two USB host connectors so that you can use that to build very simple low speed hosts which are connected to the FPGA or they can be like uh, USB game ports, so uh, PS2 type connected ports. Um, so it's quite useful if you want to do gaming and stuff. But the most important point about this is these. So we've got here um, this connector and this connector here um, are part of what I'm calling the stack system. Remember I mentioned tiles a little while back? Well, this is very similar to the tiles. Um, so each one of the boards that goes on here is actually currently called a tile. This one doesn't have HDMI, no, but ECB5 does. So um, more than anything, this is useful for me to be able to test the stack or the tile boards because so I need something quick to do that before I implement it for the ECP5 boards. So I may only make a few of these, but it all depends on whether people want them or not. It's not the main thing. The ECP5 is the main thing. Um, so I was just going to talk about what I should include on this before I order these out because I've pretty much rooted most of it now. Oh, it's got a QT connector or quick two connector, which is useful really from the um, circuit Python point of view. It's basically an I squared C type standard that's used for connecting things like accelerometers and low bandwidth sensors, etc. That kind of thing. So the question I mean I'm really asking is do I have the right features here um, do the USB host connectors belong there is it worth bothering to do that what would I do with the ports that are being used for those if I didn't use it for USB I'd probably use it to add a flash 
to the FPGA. So it's kind of either a flash or the USBs. Um, but not both. So in terms of the tile boards that sit on top, uh, I don't have one because I haven't made one yet. So these actually sit on top of the board and they screw down by these screw connectors. So this is one tile here. Let me see if I can highlight it actually. So this is tile on the left hand side. Let me drag that off. That is a tile that sits on top of the board. Okay. And there's a female connector on the board here that's surface mount that that connects into, which is a 26 pin uh, 0.1 inch header. That has 12 FPGA signals in. It also has SPI in, has uh, it's four analog signals. I mean, let me just double check if my memory is correct. Very important to get this right. Yes, it has four um, analog pins and it has I squared C. It also has a individual board select for the SPI and there's an interrupt pin. Um, so there's more in terms of the let me just take this level down this looks a bit high actually hold on sorry i just want to stop it peaking so there's more connectivity than you'd have over say a p mod um, but a lot of the applications that I've been looking for that will use this. So, for example, if I want to put stepper motors or motion control boards, then having both the SPI as well as the 12 extra lines means I can do a lot more. Not only that, I can configure them. Uh, having the extra analog lines is also useful, particularly when you get to things like brushless DC motors, for example. Um, but if you wanted to do, say, a printer, 3D printer driver board, then the analogs are kind of useful as well for measuring the temperature of both the um, um, heated bed and the hot end, or hot ends, in fact, if you had multiple hot ends. Um, to give you an example of what that looks like in a board, that means I could have a four axis stepper controller, for example, on a single board. And that number four is pretty good for the number of axes. That means that it can drive quite a few different classes of uh, motion control on a single board. And if you double that up, of course, you've got uh, a lot more choices. Um, Laurie is asking, is this mainly aimed at motor applications? Well, the answer to that is no, but it does include them. Um, so it includes the ability to do higher power driving as well, but you do not have to use it for that purpose. You can use it for all sorts of things. So one of the other issues that you often have is if you're adding um, Ethernet, for example, only having eight pins on a P-Mod is a bit of a pain. Um, so having the 12 IOs plus the other pins makes things much more flexible. The... Um, the other thing is the mechanical stability of this is much better. So when it comes to actually building things, because these are screwed down, clamped down with physical screws, um, what you build is much more robust. So all the kind of robotic stuff is better, for example. Automation, those kind of things. Anywhere it's going into a more hostile environment is going to be easier to make and it's going to produce a, a better solution. So that's something I'm exploring because I want to be able to support that on the ECP5 board as well. Now you could, if you want, turn this into a gaming board. All you do is you just make another board that sits on top that's two tiles wide, probably. In fact, you might only need one of the tiles, whatever, um, and do it that way. Now the tiles and the, the two FPCs are sharing pins. So you either do one or you do the other, depending on what your needs are. 
So it's a good experimentation board. Now, the other reason I'm doing this board is I'm a bit peed off with using a tiny little feather board. It's doing my head in, quite frankly. Um, for development purposes, it's really not a good size board. Maybe it's a good board for later, but when you're actually developing stuff and trying to test stuff and trying to interface it to different things, it's not a good format. So, so this will help me get over there. Okay, doesn't mean I'm going to produce this in any numbers. Um, you know, the question is the difference in costs between this and the uh, amalgam. If the amalgam is made in two different types, a kind of low cost one and a high cost one, uh, differentiated by what's populated on the board or certain components on the board, the cost of that isn't going to be that much more than this. So it may make this redundant anyhow. Uh, but it's important that I get something made so I can actually test some of these tile type boards and see how that works before committing to it. So it's an important step um, and it just makes things easy to work with. Uh, this battery thing here is a problem. I imported that from Alloy, but it doesn't kind of work here. If you have the USB, then you can't really support this because your lithium ion battery is going to be max 4.2 volts. How on earth do you use that to drive the 5 volts required for the USB host? So those two don't make sense together unless you start adding in boost converters, etc. Suddenly then the cost goes up and it becomes a bit daft. So I've kind of left this on one side that probably won't need to be supported in this instance. Probably wouldn't make sense. I could have a high power connector here as well, which is useful. But again, the system, the tile type system doesn't actually need that because of the way it works. You can use the screw connectors on the top or bottom here directly. Um, it also enables you to work at different voltages if you need to work at different voltages. The key thing, one of the big problems I've had is when you are making boards is having enough room to put the connectors on the boards. You know, so if that's a P mod, they tend to be too narrow to be useful in many cases. So one of the things that the, you know, the stack system does with its tiles is you've got this entire axis down here on which to place connectors, you've got a lot more room. So that was one of the bigger changes from the earlier type tile designs that I was playing around with because I never had room to put them. I mean, it's particularly true if you do something like, you know, a motion controller, you know, where you need to have motor connectors, then you need end stops and then you need PWM driver connectors, etc., etc., power connectors, blah, 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 blah. It gets out of hand pretty quickly. In terms of connectivity so that helps solve that problem as well it's just a better format it's easier to work with so that's where we are with that um, let me know any thoughts on that I will certainly be making several of these I could potentially make a few tens of these if other people are interested in participating I'm not sure I will put these into mass production unless there's a demand because I think once I've got my amalgam design finished, um, the lower end cost of that board, and I'm thinking here of having two versions of that board, a low cost version with a 12F on it and a larger one with a 45F. You know, and there may be a memory difference between the two, or I may not even include DRAM in the low cost one or something to try and get the pricing right. But the cost of the lower end one isn't going to be much more than the cost of this from a bill of materials point of view. Um, Laurie says, I'm interested in trying out this concept. Thank you, Laurie. Good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not presenting this really as the next thing in terms of the boards I'm going to manufacture. The next big manufacturer run I'm going to do is going to be ECP5 based. Um, this is an interim run. And then if people want me to manufacture some of those after troubleshooting them, I will look at it. And if the numbers are there, then I'll do it. Simple as that. But I do need to explore the tile and stack. And I need to debug that 
and I need to physically and mechanically check out that it does what it should and I can fit the type of boards and connectors that I need onto that. And certainly all the end margin stuff that I want to do moving forward, I'm going to need to use physical examples in order to show what's going on here. I mean, it's all been fairly obvious, even doing simple stuff on the alloy board, how difficult it is to do it with uh, the smaller format stuff. It's um, very tricky. So I figured I'd just show you guys. So, uh, yeah, Laurie's interested in the um, tile concept. As am I, as you can guess. So that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, I might, let me give you a peek, because what this leads to is an amalgam board. I wonder if I've got, uh, can I, can I open that? Oh. Uh, so there's the original, the um, the core, the amalgam core board. But there's another way of looking at this as well. Another possible candidate based on the tiles. Hold on. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Where is that? Uh, tell me, I just got to find the file. I've got too many things on here. Amalgam. Mm -mm -mm. so yeah this is what an ecp5 version of that may look like so it's going to require a bit more explaining oh i need to move something out of the way here hold on that's not helpful right so this is a possible how an ECP version, ECP5 version of the SAC system would look at this point. This isn't rooted. I do have a good schematic, um, which is unbelievably crowded. But there is an important thing here. Hold on, let me just get that out of the way because that's not helpful. So on here, what you see happening is, so again, I've got two tile socket, two tile or stack connectors, one and two, just like the black ice five, but also there's another two, which are here and here <laughs> let me select here so the way that this would work is the green ones here are the top layer the blue ones are the bottom layer so in this stack it really is a stack so I've actually got four different tiles two on the top and two on the bottom with this board sandwiched in between the two which gives me a really nice high density um and then the other things that would be on this board as well so i've got neat so i'm reusing the ecp32 type circuit python part but that's this time connecting to the ecp5 there's a hdmi mini hdmi connector wired correctly yeah there's a couple of USB connectors. I want to do two rather than one. Um, there's some DDR RAM. Uh, it's going to be available in two sizes. There is the... Um, this is the MIPI out connector on here. And then on the top, you've got two camera connectors. Sorry, on the top, you've got one camera in connector, CS1, CSI one and then below that you've got csi2 so it's actually you could do stereo cameras which go into the ecp5 there's a quick connector um what else have we got here a couple of buttons uh most of the power supplies on this are switch mode as well linear 
These FPC connectors probably won't be there. I'm going to get rid of them. I don't need those. There was a possibility of using a mix mod connector as well, um, which might be a cool backward feature to have. Um, and then a separate power connector here and a bunch of RGB LEDs on the top. So that's what the board I'm going to manufacture in large quantities potentially will look like if the stack tile stuff works as planned and we like it. So that's kind of where this is heading. Yeah. So it's a quick peek. Oops. Do, 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 do. Quick sneak peek. Do let me know your thoughts. So that's where I want to take things on these particular boards because it enables things to be built uh, in a much more constructive way. But I think we need to do the Black Ice 5 in order to do that. That enables us to quickly and cheaply test things. Things are changing a lot, says Laurie. Well, possibly, yeah. I'm just exploring the space and trying to work out what's the best way to go. But I'm more and more sold on the tiling concept and on the stack. That's what's driving this to a degree. It just seems practical. I dropped the 80 pin connector. I still have that design, Laurie. I could still do that design. But yeah, if I went the stack route, you wouldn't get that, obviously. And that's still an option to do the system on a module. I could do both. Um, it depends really how well the tile thing works at the end of the day, which is why I want to do the black ice built quickly. I mean, I will do the build, you know, I won't be getting it manufactured in China. I will literally get a few boards in, in a few weeks, knock a few of these up, test it, make sure it works. If it works, maybe make a few more for you guys to have a play around with before we then commit to um, manufacturing the um, the bigger boys. It's hard to decide what you want on the main board if there is a stack of other boards. You have to explain that one to me, Laurie. What do you mean? Do you mean from my design point of view or as someone that was to buy one? Yeah, or you could do the tiles don't have to be tiles. They could be converters to other types of connectors. You could turn them into a P-mod connector, for example, if you really wanted to. Or as I say on the ECB5, there's enough pins left over to have a mix mod connector. So you've got some backward compatibility if you need that. It plugs in the side, which is okay for development. It's just not good for any kind of deployment because you know those connectors are just mechanically rubbish. Yeah, and you don't have to follow the tile. You know, you could do a board that's two tiles effectively. Nothing stopping you doing that. And that will give you a lot more pins. Yeah. I mean, what Laurie's saying here is the main board wants the high speed connectors like HDMI. But that's nearly always been my policy, anyhow, is to keep the high speed stuff on the main board going to 
standard connectors that are used in the industry whether that's the video type things uh, USB well that's not really high speed USB in our case but yeah the MIPI uh, LCD type FPC connectors, the CSI type FPC connectors. You know, those FPC connectors I'm doing for the cameras are the same as the Raspberry Pi cameras. So you can reuse the cameras commonly available for Raspberry Pi. You know, and there's no way you should be taking that onto a daughter board, in my opinion. What would be the benefit of doing that? You know, when you've got two FPC connectors on there. That can go straight to the cameras you could still put the cameras on a board if you want and have the fpc connectors doing them so if you wanted to do a like a stereo binocular type board you could still do that the fpc interconnect good enough for that uh and i was thinking of having two uh hey two you know USB 2 connectors on there as well so that you can use those for like gaming ports and do all that kind of stuff as well or you could use it as a serial port if you want to use it as a USB serial port that kind of thing in addition to the ESP USB which is why I had two on the ESP5 so that's that I just wanted to give an update on what I was thinking, where I'm going with this hardware, and I want to prioritize the tile and stack. So I want to get it tested, I want to make sure that we can get things working, and that it does what we think it should. And then we can get the ECB5 protoed and made in numbers. Because so I've got all the components already, most of that. How are we doing for time? So about an hour in. Any more questions on the um, hardware side of things? Before I move on. So will you do Black Ice V first rather than Ally? Yes. I'm not doing Ally at this point. My priority is to get the stack stuff working so I can get the ECP5 out. From a manufacturing point of view, I need to get the ECP5 boards done. That's my priority. Everything else is secondary. But the Black Ice 5 is like a step there. Now, if we decide later, maybe early next year that we want to manufacture some black ice fires because they're popular and people like them great yeah we can do that because we've already done most of the research for the design anyhow and in terms of the software the alloy software is going to be the same for the black ice 5 as it will be for the alloy you know mini dip board how long will it take to black ice 5 to make not long i mean literally i'm hoping to get it in December depending on postage and stuff because there are some issues around that mm -hmm. any other hardware questions Uh, yes, I need. Uh, right, Laurie Griffiths asked a good question. Will there be any tiles to connect to it? Yes, definitely. It's kind of pointless making it if I don't have any tiles. Uh, the first tile that I'm doing that's a proper tile will be the stepper controller, which will be a four axis stepper controller, maybe with some PWM and other things on there, homing and stuff like that. Um, so that's the first port of call. I, I might do a prototype board as well, so we can knock stuff up easily on a proto board. It make a great proto board actually, because there's going to be plenty of room on it. If you compare that to the proto boards we had for things like uh, P mods and stuff, those tended to be quite small. 
you're quite limited to what you can do but I could have a much larger proto board in a tile format in fact I could do a double tile format I'll probably do a single one to start with though because it's going to be you know the black ice 5 is only going to have two tile slots so one of which I'm going to have the stepper on another one well whatever I don't know what order any people have got ideas of what's a priority that they'd like to see on a tile now is the time to start coming up with that we may do a thread in the forum um, for what people want to put onto tiles but yeah my personal for my own projects and for the stream um, because I want to do the end my gym work uh, will be to get the 4-axis motion controller onto a tile because um, I kind of need that to do the uh, motion controller stuff that I want to do in, in my gym as part of the stream that make perfect sense but yeah I'm interested in any ideas that people have on the hardware front for doing tiles uh, one of the things I want to do later but not this year probably next year probably later next year is do a brushless motor controller uh, tile that'd be cool but yeah people have got ideas but it doesn't have to be motor stuff that's just, you know, I've got a bit of a focus on there because I've got some kind of um, project work I want to do on the stream for Enmigen and Circuit Pipe. And that combination, you know, as I set out when I started this stream, is I want to show that working, you know, and work out whether this makes it the better way of doing things. An interesting way to solve those types of problems. And the, you know, building motion controller um, from scratch is a good little project for testing out various parts of that, I think. Um, it tests a number of different, you know, fairly practical areas. Any other questions on the hardware? Or shall I move on to Enmigen? Right, the others I would want are video, HDMI, VGA, and LCD tile. We don't, you won't really want a HDMI tile simply because on the ESP5 version it's going to be built in. But I mean, if you wanted it in the short term, you could do that. What you probably want to do in the short term is add one of those chips similar to what's on the P mods for the Black Ops 5. Yeah. VGA tile is really, really easy. Super easy. So what do you think on having the USB on the uh, Black Ice 5? Or should I just not bother with that and put the um, put a flash chip on? Which do you think is more useful from a test point of view? Or test purposes if you like black eyes fire I'm talking about Lori. okay no more questions. I'm going to move on to the Amigen stuff. If you have any ideas, let me know at the forum. Or the USB could go on a retro tile. Yeah, of course it could. Simple to do that. That you could get an awful lot of USBs <laughs> onto a tile. Don't forget on the on the tile, you've got 24 IOs, FPGA IOs. So you could do quite a few USBs if you really wanted them. But maybe you'd use, you could do a USB with VGA, perhaps. Possibly. So we've got, if you've got 12 IOs, then... 
depends on the bit depth you want on the VGA. But you could do a free, free two color, like eight bit color. Then you've got two pins for horizontal and vertical. So you're up to 10, that means you've got four left. You could do a single USB on there. Or, or you could do a hard double host if you don't want to change the pull ups and pull downs. Or what you can do is you can reuse the analog signals if you're not using them. There's four of them. Those could be used to control the pull ups and pull downs. So you can set the pull ups and pull downs from the um, ESP32, meaning that you can support the game controllers as well as USB hosts, possibly. So that would go on a single tile. So in this case, right, Laurie, so, so what Laurie's saying here is my issue is that everything I want USB host on, I also want VGA or HDMI or LCD on. So basically, say you were to use this, this tile and you put on there VGA and USB. Two USB ports, it can also be game ports. Um, you could even wire in game ports as well as the USB connectors and switch between them with the IOs we got. Plus you could have VGA on there that was a kind of free, free two uh, resolution. That's one tile. Don't forget you got the other tile. Now, if you're using the LCD, you don't need another tile. Just plug the LCD in. If you're not using the LCD, then you could do another tile that does something else like HDMI if you want to. So you do have some choices, even on the Black Eyes 5. When you get to the ESP5, i.e. the Amalgam, then you've actually got four tiles. So you've got a whole crap load more choices and you've got HDMI on the board. So I think a retro tile makes sense that has VGA, USB on, or optional game controllers. In fact, you might want game controllers rather than USB, I don't know. Or maybe you can have both and you switch between the two, the jumpers or something. Is the Black Eyes 5 two physical two tiles physically connected well they're connected to the esp and the um right they're connected to the fpga where they they've got 12 each fpgi fpga io pins they also have four analog pins each which connects to the esp32 plus the spi which is connected to the esp32 and a chip select they're not connected to each other but if you want to do one big board you could do that has both those connectors on it. It'll be twice the size of a single tile. So it depends what you want to do, really. You could do two tiles or you could do one big board. Not quite sure what you're thinking, Laurie, but you've got the choices. It's the two side by side that I don't understand. Oh, uh, right, hold on, let me see if I can draw this, maybe this will help, bear with me a sec, bear with me, let's just make sure that we are understanding this, uh, hold on, Let me just um, see if I can draw this bell in a sec.
just to make it clear. Hopefully this will work. Uh, okay. Holdy, 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 except right. Hold on. That. Right, let me just share this with you. Hold on, my friends. Turn this on. Let me see if I can draw the board. So what it would look like is something like this. So this is kind of an exploded view, if you like, of what the main board would look like. And then above it, so this is the tile here. And then that connects into this connector here. And then screws into, you know, the board here. And then there's a kind of there's another tile fits over this side that I'm not showing that would fit into you know on the right hand side if that makes any sense. If I can zoom in a bit. The main board is there. So this is the um, Black Ice 5. Right, so that will fit two on the top. So I'd have another tile above that can go onto the top. But when we get to the ECP5 boards, they can actually go underneath as well. So what we'd be talking about here is tiles underneath. So in other words, you've got, you know, lower tile. On the ECP5 version. If you was to look at it from this kind of side view, you'd have three layers with the main in between 
main board with a FPGA etc on and then top tiles time two and bottom tiles times two but as far as um, black eyes five goes then we're only using the top so I want to make this a low cost board any other black eyes five so there is no layer tile that one it's all done on the top Does that help explain it? Yeah, all the components for the main um, main boards are here so for example we've got you know, the main processor on the ECP5 version with black ice and then in the corner here you've got the ECP5 sorry the um, ESP and then the FPGA here <coughs> that makes any sense and then over this side you've got you know your USB connectors yeah it's, di it's difficult without me drawing it it'll be easier once we get the boards and you'll be able to I'll be able to physically show you but obviously um, we're a bit limited at the moment by my um, poor drawing skills I'm afraid <laughs> I want to make sure people understand though. This, this is quite an important step. Let me just resize this because it doesn't always update. If you do a raising, it doesn't always update. Uh, it just made it hard to decide what connectors are wanted on the right hand side and what are on the se on separate tiles. Hmm. Yeah, on the Black Eyes 5, there are two tiles that go on the top, one on the left, one on the right. But they're at the same height. Then when we go to the Amalgam type or ECP type version of a stack board, then you've got an additional two that can connect on the bottom. So you've effectively got four tiles, but in a compact area, all screwed in and connected using um, conductive spacers. So mechanically very stable, but with plenty of I.O. and stuff. Um, the, the other good thing about doing it um, this way is the all the connectors on the main board are a surface mount. That helps a lot. One of the big problems I've had with the uh, uh, black eye stuff is having to deal with the soldering for the through hole connectors. So, uh, are you kind of happy with that now, guys? Laurie, in particular, because you were asking quite a few questions about that. Does the drawing. Um, explain that my rubbish rubbish cad cool so you got any other questions should we move on to the m and stuff or have you got anything else once well, so i've got the drawing pad open is there anything else that i need to do you don't haven't quite got your head around yet move on right cool right so let me get rid of this then
turn this off. Put this away because we won't need that. Or oh, we might need that in a minute, actually. I'll leave it running just in case. Just get it out of the way for the now. So let me get rid of the CAD because we don't need that pile. Exit. Um, let's just turn that off. Get back to the editor because we're going to need this. Uh, one thing I do need to do is just recap where we were last time. Damn it. If you remember what we did last week with the stepper stuff was um, just open it up. It doesn't do recents, does it? God, I can't even remember what I called it now. What did I call this damn thing? Stepper or something? Hmm. I think I called it stepper. Can't find it now. Um No, I've opened the wrong one. That one. So this is what we did last last time. Hold on, can I make this bigger? Can you see that, guys? So this is what we worked on last week as part of the... Um, step of work what we did was we actually used iStudio to do some stuff um, but we took it slightly further than we did the um, my gym version of the step up because if we look at this um, one of the things that we're doing is we're doing things like we're going backwards and forwards if you remember at the end we just had it moving backwards and forwards So we've got um, step and directional signals, support. So we should look at getting that uh, working. Sorry, before I move on, I always ask another question here. The other thing I was wondering about was physically connecting LCDs and cameras. Well, on a project, Laurie, um, you could put whatever you want on the board. So if you want to do it on the board rather than using the FPC connectors, you can. Or the other way of looking at it is you just you you can you could you could just use the upper board to hold the cameras, and you still use the FPC connectors going around the sides onto the board. If you want to do that, you've got a choice. You could do it either way. You could either take it up the normal tile connectors or do it that way. I don't know how you're physically thinking of connecting the um, cameras. It, it's going to vary. You know, if you're using a camera, it's going to vary tremendously on what you're doing. You know, using a camera on a robot is very different from using a, you know, a kind of camera, making a camera, if you like. You know, you're going to place things like that very differently. I want to use the FPC connector, but want them physically connected. Yeah, but there's nothing stopping you doing a, a stack board and not even using the connectors, or only using some of the connectors and then using the FPC connectors to connect onto to loop to the top board. 
So what you could have is you could have a top board that connects all the tile signals that aren't being used for the camera and LCD. And then physically maybe attach your LCD display and the camera. And then any pins that are left over on the tile headers can then be broken out to the variety of things. And the camera and the LCD are actually fit, fitted on that board. There's nothing stopping you doing that. If you want um, a platform, as in physical platform to attach them to, there's nothing stopping you doing that. That's why they're on the kind of the side of the board. So they can be looped over to the top if you want, or the bottom if you want to go the other way around. that make sense yeah cool um, so this is what we have with the iStudio studio stuff so we should go back let me get rid of that and we should add this kind of directional support in uh, and if we've got time, maybe do some other bits and bobs. So back to this, let's have a look. Uh, and just, um, well, in fact, before we do that, because this is interesting. This is very interesting. The other thing that I've done, remember, well, let me refresh. With the stepper motor in N Mygen, what we're doing is we're using this switch here in the main core, and we're using the kind of Python S N Mygen uh, for each or for in to create the phases, where phases is a dictionary here with sequence on the left as a key effectively, and then the stepper motor output state on the right i.e. phase for the abc and d uh coil driving okay so the remember when we looked at the i stuff we didn't use a dictionary obviously because it was in verilog if you looked at the verilog i should probably open it up again now just got rid of it oh dear i shouldn't have closed it If you look at the Verilog for what we were just looking at for the stepper block, can you see the case statement that we're using there? We're doing it manually. But what you could do is this could actually be a table and using a table offset. So given that this is built using the dictionary, I wondered if it, if the size would how how different the um, the resource usage would be if you went with our original approach, which was using a phase dictionary here, and then this uh, four in expansion of the switch with its cases, um, or you go the other route. So um, what you can do is if I turn your attention here. Under the subdirectory build in the mmigen uh, build directory that we've got here, um, if you open up, uh, which one is it? Let me think. Is it the report file? Damn it. Huge. Or is it the IR file? No, I don't think it's the IL. I think the report is a bit huge, so probably not that. Um, timer file, yeah, that's it. So if we look here, we get a nice summary of that build that's happened under MyGent for the stepper. So 
the important thing here is I'm looking at resource usage here. It, it's saying it's used um, 42 of the uh, 5,280 LUTs um, and a bunch of IO, including some global stuff. Uh, I storm SP RAM. Using four, what's he using four SP RAMs for? Interesting. Anyhow, obviously we're using the spy and stuff, but uh, sorry, we're not using any of the spy. Sorry, I'm looking at wrong column. Not used any of those. So it's 42, it's used five AOs and two globals. The globals for the clock. Okay. Um, that will also, it says, we look at the timing. It's two different options. One which says, that, oh, that will run easily at 56.6. I think if you go down further, one of the alternate ones, we've got to about 90 megahertz. Okay. So just roughly looking at, you know, some stats on the timer and usage there. Now, if we go back and we change this, I think I, I, think I did this. So rather than using the dictionary, we go that other route that I mentioned and we use separate phases. Okay, this is a different way of doing it. And rather than using this switch here, we use this table lookup. So we're using the phases themselves. We're using the sequence to index that as an array in nmigen. Yeah. So we create the phases array, and then we index it using the sequence. So this is just an alternative way of doing it, and it actually looks like it's less, perhaps less Python-esque as well. It's an alternative way of doing the same thing. So if I then do that build, uh, this is probably going to fail. Hold on, because it's probably not going to see the mounted drive. Um, hold on. I just connect. Then I rebuild. So I'm now, oh, did I save? I think I saved. So now using that table lookup method, if we go and look at our build detail here, the resource usage is almost identical, which I find is interesting. <laughs> So this is very much two ways of doing the same thing. Now that might change if we were to reuse any of the components or could reuse any of the components in a larger scheme of things, i.e. if it's part of something else because there may be more redundancy going one way than the other. But it's interesting to look at those usages. Uh, let me see what it says about frequency as well. So the first one says 84 megahertz, for example. And the second one here, the second target says 92 megahertz. So using the table is actually slightly faster. But if we were to run this sequentially, the differences might be small. So the table thing may be slightly more efficient, but a lot less Pythonic. Um, which is interesting. I mean, I kind of like this way. Doing things. 
to me it's neat it's more pythonic the other way is a bit more hgl perhaps i don't know okay um so one of the things that we need to look at doing is um when we're exercising this is to be able to deal with direction so we have sequence here and we have face so what if we wanted to add in here external controls of step and direction so what we're trying to do here is um, is just do what get us up to where we were with the um, UI studio Verilog version So at the moment, what we're doing is we're exercising by, um, which one are we using? We're using the bench, and we call it bench, what do we call it? Stepper bench, yeah. So we're using stepper bench to exercise. So what this do is doing is it's using a counter and it's incrementing synchronously the counter on the clock cycle and then we're connecting the upper bits of those that counter the three upper bits and we're connecting that to the sequence in the stepper instance and then we're taking out the phase and we're driving the outputs so effectively, if we wanted this to be a kind of direction or um, direction and step controlled, we'd probably want to change the way that this works. Um, so one thing I need to do is make sure that this is working actually. That'd be important. I'm not seeing any activity on that at the moment because my power is disconnected by looks of it. There we go, spinning round. Uh, just to show you guys, before we go and change everything and break it. In fact, let me just do a quick copy of these files whilst I remember. Just so I can go back because I don't have this under version control. Um, where are we? I'm test. Let me just get a PowerShell up and do that. Uh, is it called Enmigen? Where are we? Enmigen test. I'm just going to do a copy. Probably going to break this completely. Go back up for that file now, it's useful. So, um, so effectively, what we want to do is
increment internally. So now that we have step and DIR, what we need is a combinational um, Actually, what we need to do is bring in a synchronized version of these signals. So let me just add those. Step S. I wonder the synchronize these with the clock. I mean, we did it very roughly in uh, Verilog um, in the iStudio example, but we probably want to do that a bit better here. So what we'd need is that there. Uh, so, uh, dot dir synchronized. That's what the underscore rest is meaning here. Uh, signal. Uh, two bits wide. So on every clock instance here, we want to synchronize in so what we need is an M dot D dot sync equals no no. Oh, so what we want to do is synchronize the uh, the incoming sync and DIR signals. I did this before, if you remember. So if I switch to um, what we did for synchronizing the um, SPI signals. Uh, SPI device, we did it here, look, it's this kind of thing. But here we're doing the um, step synchronized and DIR synchronized now, synchronized. Same again here, CS. Synchronized and DIR synchronized. Nice. Step. I'll come back to that in a sec. Like, just bear with me a sec. I'm just trying to make sure I don't mix myself up here. Um, what did I do on here? SS. Let's Right. Yeah, I'm being a dummy. I'll come back to this in a sec. Ooh, why is it not finding cat? Do we need to import cat? Imagine import cat, maybe. Uh, cat. Yeah. 
Um, right, sorry. Laurie's asking another question here about the structure. Sorry, I missed it earlier. So another option for you is to keep a py keep keep the Python dictionary and have two generation options. One that generates a Python array and a table lookup. Another which generates a switch statement. Then you could just change your parameters, your Python program, and see the resource usage of two different generate options. Yeah, yeah, that might have been a bit neater. I just used commenting out code, <laughs> just just for the purposes of showing that there actually was two ways of doing it. Uh, I probably wouldn't keep two ways of doing it. You know, I'd, you know, settle on one or the other, and then just delete the other stuff. But yeah, you're quite right. Anyhow, so just to refresh what we're doing here, then so. Um, we've got two. So I've done here. We've got two incoming signals, one-bit signals. We've got a step and a DIR. These are not synchronized to our internal clock. They are asynchronous at this point. And a good practice to avoid metastability issues is to synchronize any asynchronous signals coming in. Either that, or you use separate clock domains. Now I'm going to avoid doing that at this point. Um, so what I'm doing is creating a synchronized version of that signal. So I've got two two bit signals that represent step and DIR. And then what I do is I shift in the state of the actual lines. Um, the other thing is that means I can oh, I can look for the edges on these. Um, so I've now got those two things. And again, if you remember what I did with the SPI, what we then did with those signals was we could look for very specific positive edges or negative edges, okay, which we defined. So we could reuse that sort of thing here. I don't really need both actually I think I only need P. So what I can do within a sync statement, I could do it within here, but I'm going to actually do it separately. Um, uh, do, 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 do. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I need an if. Uh, Laurie's asking where are step and DIR coming from? If they are not synced with the clock, they're coming from outside this module, if you like. So if this was a generic part that we'd want to control via step and DIR signals rather than directly manipulating the sequence signal. That's what I'm aiming to do here. So with M if, uh, M if, M if, with M if, uh, step. Synchronized it's equal to PE, so in other words, positive edge. Hmm, oh, I done wrong. I'm using that here, aren't I? I used the wrong format. Yeah, right. Ah, being a twat. Uh, 
Uh, Laurie saying, but isn't the whole thing going to be in the same clock domain? Possibly, yes. But I don't know that at this point. So... Wait a minute. Oh, damn it. Of course. Right, so on the positive, when I get a positive edge of the step, what I actually want to do is change the sequence value. And it's going to depend on the direction. Uh, so we have and got if uh, done it again uh, self dot dir synchronized step is equal to zero um, I'm only interested in the latest bit, actually. Um, the upper bit. Okay, hold on, what have I done here, who actually put that, sorry, I'm mixing my Verilog and my bloody Python up here for my constants. Bear with me, and I'll go back through this. My use of else is correct there, isn't it? Just with an empty bracket, because I'm not testing anything. Quite right. I'm being daft. Uh, this all needs to be part of an MD sync. Thank you, Laurie. Hmm. So what I'm saying here is when I get a positive edge of a step, in other words, I've got a step signal coming in, depending on whether the DIR status is one or zero, it will either increment the sequence or decrement the sequence because incrementing the sequence will turn it one way, the step of one way, decrementing the sequence will reverse the direction. So now the stepper driver understands what 
manipulation of step or dir controls are so now an outside bench or simulation can use the step and dir pins rather than trying to directly manipulate the internal sequence variable in mmygen yeah <laughs> laurie says yeah the else uh the else open bracket close bracket i.e else crawl is correct my most common error he says yeah i know it's kind of odd it will take some getting used to writing in my gen. I, uh, it doesn't feel anywhere near natural to me at all i'm having to focus every step everything i write i'm having to <laughs> concentrate hard on it really slowing me down i mean i eventually i think i will get there but yeah so what we've effectively added now is control so from an outside point of view we won't any longer need to manipulate those two those can be internal apart from phase which is the output of course so we won't need to manipulate self self dot c we know the sequence is an internal now um, we're actually going to make our changes by manipulating the step and direction signals the one bit signals that are coming in which is how we want the stepper motor to normally work. Yeah. So we're effectively within our stepper design now using proper controls. Um, so these are the three that will be exposed. So in some ways, I'm not sure what the standard way of doing this is. Do you have the ones that are exposed first and the internal ones separate? They should certainly be separated. Is there a standard way of saying these? Um, whereas these are internal. I guess you can probably force it. Uh, So that's kind of internal signals, regs, or states, effectively. Whereas these are the external ones. These are inputs, and that's an output. I guess if we really want to be pedantic, maybe we'd uh, do it in this order. Often the internal ones can be local to the elaborate method. Possibly yes, but when you're doing a simulation or bench, you might want to get access to them, I guess. So on the ports here, remember I have a ports function. Um, I'd probably want to add those in so that we can see the internal states of them. Yeah. Depends how deeply we want to go on our um, simulation, etc. Tell you what's quite good actually is to um, always have that quite close to um so what have we got sequence phase uh, you don't have to include them all obviously but if you really wanted to have a look and see what was going on you might want to do it this way yeah Uh, we got them all. We've got phase. We've got step. Da, 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 da. So yeah, probably good from a simulation point of view. Yeah, 
Yeah, as Laurie's saying, but from a simulation and elaborate method, that may not be the case. Yeah, it depends. Your mileage may vary on that, depending on what stage you are. Um, the simulation would now be different because what we'd want our simulation to do now is not manipulate self here, but actually manipulate the step and DIR signals. So maybe what we could have here would be, um, so as it goes up, um, MD sync count equals count plus one, MD combinational sync self equals this. What I could do, maybe, I mean, could I be doing something? So if I've got, I mean, what am I doing? One to four. Bits one to four. Why am I using bits? One? Oh, I was doing it really quickly, weren't, wasn't I? <laughs> Literally in nanoseconds, it was doing that manipulation because I didn't want it to go through massive amounts of time so if i was to do the same sort of thing what i could say is on bits one one the lsb one to four and the msb so what i could do is i could have maybe wonder if this would work uh self dot dir sorry step equals to bit one and then dir hmm, to the msb So it does a bunch of steps, but after so many steps, it then changes direction. Are you with me? Does that make sense? Uh, what was it? Yeah. Let me just check one other thing. Simulate here. Oh, attribute error. Cannot assign desync attribute. Do you mean desync plus? E oh, yes, yes, I did. Oh, what nine numbers are sixty-four? MD com MD sync. Right. There we go. Plus equals. Hmm. I think that worked. Then we need to run GTK. Did I call a file? I need step of VCD. Step of VCD. Step of 
.vcd. Okay. Let me just turn this on so you can see it on the screen, guys. Uh, ooh, doo -doo. Logic out now. Not logic. GTK wave. There we go. Let me just make this a bit bigger, actually. smaller it's annoying right so if we look at what we've got now so here's our clock our dir changes after quite a few uh our step hold on let's put that up here our step is changing quite frequently in comparison to the dir can you can you see that guys is that is that big enough for you to um to see i tell you what's really annoying i'm seeing all that crap on the side can i give you a bit more of the waveform right so step changing then and then the other thing we can see is let's look at the synchronized versions of these signals just to show you what's going on here so whereas the dir changes where I, I know it's changing on the clocks it's being driven by the same thing but normally that might change at an asynchronous point so this just resynchronizes it with the positive edge of the clock and likewise with the step changes uh you got the same thing plus you got the history so you know where you got a positive edge or a negative edge so what we're then looking at is what happens to sequence so starting off zero zero one 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 zero one oh one so that's actually going down to start with so that's seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. But then the direction changes here, and then it should start going up. So it's gone zero, and it's gone all the way around back to the top, one, one, one. And then it's going down. That's still going down, even though direction's changed. Hmm. So maybe it's not doing what it ought. Because at this point, the direction has changed. So let's just see what direction goes so zero, zero, one. Ah, I have a bug. Let me see in the code. It's because I'm looking for bit one to be one when actually it's bit zero. Go. Oh. Save. Let me run that again. Let me go back. Let's do a reload. I think it's a reload. God, I always forget this. Oh, what's the bloody? There is a quick key. Reload waveform. Shift Control R. So 
Yes, now if we look at it, let me move this cursor here. So after the direction change, so it's going down, da 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 da, zero, one, zero, zero. And straight after direction change, look what happens. It's going from zero, zero to zero, one, to two, three, four, Five, six, seven. It's actually going further to eight here. And then direction changes again. So it's then going down from zero down to one, one, one. It's gone right round one, one, zero, one, oh, one. To now. So it's then going down. So that looks like it's uh, working. The only got you in there is that kind of weird bit where it overlaps, where the sequence counter goes all the way around. But that, that's, that's probably doing as it should. Um, and I'm presuming that the phase is behaving itself, that zero, zero and the phase correspond. Uh, maybe we should show the phase in binary here. Yeah, so we're seeing the right thing here. And you see the reversal, the direction of the order of these changing from going that way to going that way as the direction changes. So our simulation now controls that in a way that makes um, more sense. So our simulation part now works with the changes we've made. Um, any questions on that? Anything anyone's lost on? Anything I did there that's confusing? Oh, I've got some water. Vas a bit. Uh... You okay with that, Laurie? Has everyone nodded off, perhaps? How are we doing for time? We are two, 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 two hours and 25 in. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Sad but true. Okay, so the only bit that we probably need to fix on this now, I mean, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to finish showing it. Well, yeah, it's 20 past 10 gone. Um, let's have a quick look at the bench, I guess. Um, cause that's going to be broken now. What do we have on the bench? We're doing a similar thing. So here we're setting the stepper sequence. The motor equals to the phase is the same, but here what we probably want to do is do what we've done on the um, um, on the simulator, rather than. Uh, Setting the uh, sequence directly, we're going to set the uh, counter at some point. Uh, so, sorry, set the uh, step maybe on the lower bit of the counter, and then we need to set direction as well. Lose that. So that's 15 to 18 normally. Um, and then set the direction later. Uh, but we're going to need more than, I mean, you could set that to 18, but it's literally only going to move eight steps and then change direction. So it's barely going to be perceivable movement. So let's just make this better. Bigger. So rather than going up to 20, let's go up to like 24 and then make that 24. 
22. Save that. Can we will that build? Even that may be too fast. I'm not seeing any action on it here. Uh, let me show you. Perfect. Hmm. Yeah, having trouble getting my camera to all show. Yeah. For some reason my USB camera is not playing ball. Wow. My laptop's getting hot, man. I see nothing. Oh dear, has my camera decided to um go a wall? Why can't I see that? I'll take my lens cap off. Bear with me, folks. Hold on. Let's use this one. Maybe I'm using the wrong one. Da da da. Yes. Yes. Just let me just move that slightly because it's at a bit of an angle. So as you can see, it is currently not moving. Let me just see. Just get a putty terminal open. Make sure that the um, uh, circuit Python is picking up the change. Hold on. Let me just open the circuit Python window. Reload. Oh, it's because I haven't copied it over. Donk. Right, let me get rid of this application. Get my PowerShell back. What's it called? Logic. Is it called logic.bin? I can't remember. I called the name of the file. Is it 
was stepper.bin or logic.bin? Well, oh, forgive me, guys, because I, I didn't run this for over a week because I did the iStudio stuff. If I look at the date on here, what did it create? Logic. It's got to be logic in, isn't it? Uh, I've got the right one. Step of bench. Mount the logic dot bin. Oh, it should do it directly. I shouldn't need to do a copy. I think it's copying it over, but for some reason it's not um, operating it. I think we might have a mistake somewhere. Let me just check uh, what it says. Pretty sure that copied it over. Let me just check the time. Logic. When was that updated? Twenty-two thirty-one. Yeah. So it's definitely writing that. Maybe I have messed up somewhere. Let's just check what our bench is doing again. Sorry. Um. Twenty-four. 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 So we're doing a step on the fifteenth. Two to the fifteenth, fifteenth bit, and then where? So what have we got? We've got seven bits before it changes direction. But the counter signal goes up to twenty-four before it goes round. Two to the twenty-four. So I would have thought. But I'm just thinking, two to the twenty-two is about one second. Given our current clock, <laughs> so it would have done two to the seven. Steps. Just increase that slightly. Maybe it's happening, but it's so fast that it's not noticeable. I know what we can do. Let's have a look at the logic analyzer. Oh, why did my screen just flash? Um, so a quick capture of the logic analyzer and just see if anything's actually happening on the output. There may be something going on, but it's just happening so fast we can't see it. Entirely possible. Ew, there's definitely so. That's interesting, there's a big pause. Let me show you guys what I can see here. There's definitely some activity. Let me zoom in on that. 
there's intermittent activity there's gaps in the step signals but what do all those step signals look like they look like legitimate step signals but hold on Is there an error here? No. Really, this isn't quite right. <clears throat> we got our IOs mixed up again. Remember we had that problem. With the IO pins being mixed up. It looks like three of them are good, but the fourth one's in the wrong position. That one looks good. That one doesn't. Hmm. What kind of thing is this? There is something up. I think. Same pattern. Uh, actually, this one looks okay. Well, oh, no. Hmm. Okay. Not quite sure what's going on here. Maybe. So, if it's stepping. Let's try and increase this. Hold on. Can I? There's definitely, I can feel something happening on the motor. But maybe it's just too fast. Let's do let's just keep increasing this. I'm just going to increase these numbers a bit. Okay, not quite sure what I've done. I'm missing something here. Twenty seven, but twenty seven. So that'll be a step every hmm, tenth of a second, maybe. Step in place. I'm setting direction, I'm setting step.
Hmm. That should work. Hey, do you want to know what's going on there? Did I swap any of these leads around to make it work last time with the ice stuff? Because we had that problem with the channels, D, A, B, and C, and D. Didn't we swap C and D around or something? I don't think it'll make any difference. Let me just try. I don't think that's the issue. Pretty sure it's not that. Hmm. I don't know. I'm uncertain. What I've done that's definitely happening at a lower speed so I can actually see the LED flashing on the um, on the alloy board I've definitely slowed it down probably want to speed that up a bit I can feel some vibration in the motor, but I'm not quite sure what's wrong. I think I'm going to leave that for now because I can work that out later. Um, so that's really where we are with that. I've probably made some sort of mistake somewhere on here. I need to check, but I'm out of time. Um, next time, what I want to do is spend a bit more time with MMIGEN again. But what we want to do is add the serial uh, support. IESPI support so that we can send uh, the step control directly from within circuit Python, um, and that that's a much more efficient way of doing it I mean we could even have it asynchronously control the step and DIR signals as well that's another possibility but it's probably going to take a bit of extra time we'll see how much time we've got next time we could do that first maybe and then add the SPI stuff on secondly anyhow that's where we are now uh if there are any more questions or anything that you want to cover don't forget you can do so down at the forum thank you for being with me today on this little journey um if there's also any feedback on the black ice 5 board and what we should do in terms of getting that done so that we can start testing these tiles and stacks if you're interested in taking one of those off my hand for the test period again let me know um and we'll work on getting that done uh for december basically um so that's it from me today um next session is scheduled for next wednesday with any luck if i don't get any interruptions um we should be able to um add in the spi support Hello, Twinks. What's he doing? He's coming up. Hmm? Oh, just had some food. Do you want to say hello? This is my other cat, or our other cat. This one's called Crystal. She's slightly different from Sparkle. And she's a she, not a he. She's got white as well as black. Um, just saying hello. She tends to be a bit quieter and doesn't interfere with my streams as much, do you? 
but you can be very attention taking seeking sometimes mm -hmm. anyhow thanks guys uh i will speak to you next wednesday ciao